you studied law, I'm sure you had a passion for it, uh, you're also a practicing advocate, and you've now decided to, of course, in a way, enter politics. The two, for many decades in our country, have been very closely related. We've seen a lot of great lawyers eventually become members of parliament. Uh, they've become ministers uh, in governments as well. I'd just like to understand from you, why did you decide to join uh, or you know, public service or politics along with uh, being an advocate? Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. So, uh, I missed your name, I'm so sorry. Devika. Okay. So, firstly, I'll, I'd like to give a disclaimer that my politics, joining my politics, my interest in politics has nothing to do with my, be, me being a lawyer, to be very honest. Okay. Because you asked me a very honest question, so I'll ask, answer a very honest thing that the reason why I came into politics is when I saw Bharatiya Janata Party abrogating this law of triple talaq, that's when I felt that this is the time, it's high time women, especially Muslim women, should be coming and doing active politics because it's only then can we bring out the reality of different kind of cultures who has been dominating the women in the society, which has been like a curse on the women's life, different things which needs to be changed. So it's very important for a Muslim woman, for, a, for an advocate, for a woman like me who's social, who's been doing social work, who's been going and, you know, putting her voice out loud for the women who have been sub, uh, suffering domestic violence and dowry, harassment and all of that. So I really felt that this is high time we, uh, young women and Muslim, Muslim women should come out there out loud and be a part of politics so that you can bring the change you want to see in the society. And I think this was a major curse because I, being a lawyer, now that's when I connect to a lawyer as well because that, as a lawyer, I have seen n number of cases also coming from my close families who have faced this triple talaq. Yes. Also women who have been facing so much curse because their husbands have multiple marriages without their consent. So this is something which instigated me, I'd say, which also motivated me to join politics. And then that's when I felt that this is the right time so that I can, you know, join hands in hand with the kind of government we always wanted. The kind of government which is not going to do the appeasement politics on the name of Muslim vote banks, but coming and bringing the change which is much needed in today's world or I'd say which was much awaited since so many years and which was much needed by the Muslim, for the women, Muslim women and their upliftment. So this is why I felt that I need to be in politics and I need to be a part of this change. Okay. And, uh, and that's a, uh, you know, very fair enough and a very good reason uh, for why you've decided to join politics. But Nikit, I'd also like to understand from, you know, you've studied the law. Like I said, you're also a practicing advocate. Um, you know, you go to courts, you understand how the legal system works. How do you think uh, that your expertise as a lawyer can then help in uh, bringing about new methods of simplifying basically very complex legal judgments, laws, as well as the legal language? Because a problem that we face today is that the common man, uh, including myself as a journalist, there are so many times that I have to actually read uh, judgments that come out and I have to sift through uh, thousands of pages. How do you think that you then being in uh, public service now, how can you bring your expertise as a lawyer to basically simplify the language of law? See, uh, rightly said, and uh, this is very important for politicians to be able to give out their message to the people and for the people to be able to understand that what is the perspective of a lawyer and a politician when it comes out to the statesman given by the court and the uh, verdicts coming out of the court and people need to simplify, uh, you know, we, we need to simplify that and add on to the people's knowledge is that's when you create the political uh, and a legal department, when you collide both of them in a single organization, like that's exactly what we do in Bharti Janta Party. We have a legal department who takes care of everything what is happening. Even as a spokesperson, I also get a lot of confusions that are, you know, at times that what we have to speak about the party and what is the party line. So sometimes what happens is that from the legal department, the people who are advocates and a part of the legal department in the Bharti Janta Party, who gives us the statement that this is how you need to break through and come out loud to the people, that this is how you can simplify and talk to people and tell your perspective that this is where it comes from and this is where it goes. So when you talk about simplifying, I think as an advocate and as a young politician also, 
when you connect with people, when you break through the knowledge that what you are bringing from the court and taking to the politics, it is sometimes confusing also that, you know, it, it is sometimes confusing in a way that the, the, the statements what are coming from the court, it's so that the kind of words, the legal words they're using, the statements and the IPCs they're using, it is very easy for us to tell them when we're on the TV, when we're talking about it, then we're multiplying things. So, you know, you need to have a legal department in any organization to go to the people, to the commoners, and explain them that what is happening, and that legal department breaks the silence when it comes to simplifying. So you need to have that legal department, which already Bharti Janta Party has. Right. Nikit, I'd also like to understand from you then, what do you think are the good characteristics of a lawyer? And what are the characteristics of a good politician? And do the two actually converge? Obviously, they do. I mean, a politician, a uh, lawyer, to start with, a good lawyer is the one who's fighting for the right and the wrong. And they're not discriminating between a criminal and a victim. You don't, right. you know, before you are given a verdict or before the decision comes out, you cannot differentiate or you cannot prejudge. Yes. In politics, I mean, no, no offense to the media, but sometimes what happens is that media becomes the place where you're prejudging people. Also, the political analyst. I mean, no offense to the media, but no, no, sometimes, none taken. No, no. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you're the ones who all, already give the judgments out that this is going to happen or this has already happened. Wherein we've seen a lot of things happening in the Sushant, uh, the poor fellow Sushant, Sushant Singh Rajput Rajput case. case. Yes. You've seen what has happened, and that has destroyed a lot of people's life. So when, as a politician, I think this is exactly what a politician needs to do is stop discriminating into people even if you're a voter even if you're seeing a voter or you're not seeing a voter as an anti-person maybe somebody sitting here might be an Aam supporter or maybe a Congress supporter and some people might be BJP supporters so you de stop need to discriminating that like a lawyer does and when you come clean out of that I think that is the place where you can talk about it you can put the facts out li loud and I think that is why uh, again, uh, being the spokesperson also for, for BJP, I'll talk about this, that that is why Bharti Janta Party has been winning so many states and we've seen the, you know, the, the major victory in three states because we do not differentiate. We're working for everyone and that's what the politician needs to do and that is what the lawyer needs to do. Stop prejudging things, stop discriminating, come out clean, work for the welfare like the you know, in a way, the lawyers are also doing the welfare in the society. That is what, what you do. And if you collide the social work into it, I think that is the cherry on the cake. So is there then a close relationship between law and politics? Uh, or does society perceive it to be absolutely two, you know, different uh, entities altogether? But do you feel that there's actually a very close relationship that we're not uh, being able to judge properly? Obviously, because see, what is the government doing? The government is making laws and the laws are being implemented. The taking care of the laws has been done by the lawyers, by the courts themselves. So obviously everything is going hand in hand. The constitution of India cannot run without a law. A lawyer cannot run without the constitution of India. So this is how we go hand in hand. And I think obviously both of them needs to walk path in path so that we can make sure that we are whatever we are implementing in the society is very much clear is very much important very much empowering the people we sit seeing right here and in the world that you as a person when you're talking about politics and law you have to come out clean there and that is what we do I think obviously you both that that both both goes hand in hand okay Nikit uh we just have to wrap up at one last question to you. What do you think are the challenges before young lawyers today? I'd just like to understand from an entirely legal perspective. <laughs> See, uh, I, I'd not say that's a challenge, like, but when I uh, practice law and when I take cases, most of the people who come to me say that you're a PIL woman because you're filing PILs, but when I'm filing a PIL, the, pa the, the people of our country might feel that I am following an ideology, but that is the ideology which collide directly with the people and the yes. welfare of our com community. Like I am also, uh, I have also filed a PIL for UCC. So that is something obviously my party holds the ideology for, but also that is something which the people of India today needs and it's high time we need that. So these probably would be the chances that you're prejudge and that is what I talked about in my first segment that you need to stop prejudging, you need to see, see everything cannot be black and white, you need to go through that gray area also and then figure out the what is right and wrong. I think that is the most important fact in politics and being a lawyer. Okay, Nigga, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, welcome. that's all the time I that we understand. have. 
and uh, you know thank you so much for taking out your precious time to be with us uh, here today at the second law and constitution dialogue for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon